Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is May 10th, and today we're going to take a look at this next system incoming, moving out of the Gulf of Alaska and into the Pacific Northwest starting tomorrow and on in through early Thursday. A powerful frontal system will come down through and bring some mountain snow, valley rain, and some breezy conditions around the area. But before that, we might get a fairly decent day for some portions. Some sun breaks already occurring across the region, but the central Puget Sound looks like some convergent zone activity and some clouds hanging on. That's going to vary during the day it might move north a bit but it might keep you from seeing that sun too much today taking a look at the infrared satellite imagery here you can see this mature cyclone south of the Aleutian Islands almost stationary there and you can see the cold air that spilled out behind that last trough that we had if you're looking from north to south here out on a boat you would notice this would start to turn to the right here and you can see that's the Coriolis effect taking effect on this air mass as it moves down and you can see how it kind of swings out of the northeast there for the Hawaiian islands and as it does it picks up some moisture and becomes unstable at the lower levels and that's what brings trade showers to the hawaiian islands so when you're out there you can remember that and these trade showers usually fall mostly on the windward sides there against the slopes on the hawaiian islands and these showers are usually pretty gentle and bring moisture throughout the year to the area down there but you can see elsewhere that intertropical convergence zone has now moved north of the equator because we are now into our spring season here this will move a little bit further north during the summer as well as the southern hemisphere is going into their fall and winter seasons here as you can see some storms rolling around down there in the southern hemisphere as well now looking a little bit closer here across the region, you can see that area of clouds across the central sound in Seattle northward towards Everett. These uh, showers are going to be kind of persistent through this area today, but elsewhere there are some sun breaks. It's nice and sunny at my house right now in some portions through southwest Washington, but you can see some also some showers will be passing through today. But the central sound might not clear out very well. Mm -hmm. If you want the real sunshine, go over to eastern Washington now as soon as you come off the down into the east slopes there, you'll get into some nice glorious sunshine you can see the snowpack in the cascades and you can see the clouds start to build up a little bit with the heating across western oregon as well the best thunderstorm chance are probably going to be down into oregon today the idaho panhandle as these instability gets going a bit during this afternoon so checking things out you can see that uh, area of showers across the central puget sound here and we do have some showers offshore so there will be some passing showers across the region today this is national weather service spokane talking about thursday afternoon through friday morning chance of thunderstorms with this frontal system is going to roll through there some gusty winds up to 40 miles per hour are possible for the area so nice graphics here from the spokane national weather service Checking out the rest of the country really quickly. Here's the, uh, the Texas Panhandle, some an enhanced risk for severe weather. A little bit of a tornado threat up there through Wisconsin. You can see that general thunderstorm threat there through southern and southeast Oregon, Idaho, into Montana. Day two, I'll be out chasing this. So watch for my live streams here. I'll do some Q&As on the trip too, so we can do talk about Pacific Northwest weather in the meantime. This will probably get upgraded a little bit tomorrow, the tornado threat there Wednesday. And then as we go into Thursday, you can see a much more significant fear threat across some of the Dakotas there in Minnesota and Iowa. So anyway, but checking this out, why don't we get severe weather like that here in the Pacific Northwest? Well, basically, we just don't have proximity to a warm water source like they do in the plains. Gulf of Mexico is very warm. You can see the rich dew points, very moist, deep moisture, and you can see they have access to this here. It cannot breach the Rocky Mountains and get further west into our area. So we just don't get that type of moisture here. So that's why we don't get those severe storms that produce, you know, hundreds of lightning strikes every minute across some of the areas here when these big squall lines are coming across the region. We just don't get that kind of severe weather here in the Pacific Northwest generally. Now checking out Seattle temperatures. You can see we're below average again today or yesterday. Eight degrees below average. We're going to be below average again today. But if you're in the area of the sun breaks, it was not that bad of a day yesterday. I mean, it feels pretty warm when it's 57 and sunny, especially compared to what we were dealing with during April. But yeah, so enjoy this day today if you're getting those sun breaks because tomorrow the clouds are going to be streaming back in and that system's going to be rolling through the area Thursday morning with a potent frontal system. So we'll take a look at that here in a moment as well. You can see Portland's been well below average the last few days as well. By this time, they're you know they're starting to get up towards 68 degrees as an average high and they're well down into the 50s still. 
So yeah, we're doing this thing again here in May. We're well below average across much of the Pacific Northwest. This is Spokane. You can see April and May, well below average again. And they start getting up into the upper 60s as far as uh, normal highs. And you can see how it really spikes later on here into July where Spokane averages 87 degrees for, uh, for a high temperature there. Now we're looking at the the her the 3km trying to show you guys that the central sound is going to be locked in a bit but you can see the instability build through oregon today and that's why that that general thunderstorm risk for idaho montana into oregon and not so much for western washington put this into motion here you can see the next frontal system bring those clouds in wednesday morning then you can see we're going to be really cloudy during the afternoon wednesday as this next frontal system bears down pretty powerful storm system rolling through here thursday morning we'll take a look at what we can expect here in a moment this is highlighting the shower activity today you can see it kind of hangs around the central sound mainly seattle north probably not going to clear out the clouds completely for the area there today and as we uh, I wanted to highlight this too you can see those showers down through oregon for that thunderstorm threat nothing severe though now here comes the next system though rolling in through the day wednesday and you can see that precip start later into wednesday afternoon before the frontal system fairly strong reaches the coast thursday morning then swings through the western portions and then on through the afternoon eastern portions of washington oregon and then into idaho but this can bring some mountain snow some breezy winds and some moderate rainfall at times for the area. Here's the HER 3KM, just kind of highlighting the shower activity, passing showers today, but Central Sound's gonna be kind of stubborn, burning off those clouds. And you can see the thunderstorm threat down there through Oregon as well. And then as we go through the day, Wednesday evening, you'll see some showers start to approach Wednesday evening. And then that frontal system, a pretty strong one, is gonna move on shore here Thursday morning. So checking out what kind of snowfall we can expect. Check out the Cascade. is going to get a pretty good shot of snowfall for this, especially for May. I mean, even the pass areas might get a bit of snowfall here. Olympic Mountain's getting a good shot of snow all the way down to the Oregon Cascades, the upper elevations of northeast washington idaho eastern oregon getting some snow as well so continue to build that snowpack is going to be a very good thing for the summer coming up total precipitation you can see the showers through the day today you know spotty and light nothing too major going on uh, a little bit of a highlight there for the conversion zone maybe up on the higher terrain but then you can see the next frontal system roll through the area here and some pretty good precip happening on the washington coast especially the whole rainforest there thursday morning if you like rainfall that's the place to be on thursday morning check out the cascades getting some pretty good amounts too look at seattle getting up over a half an inch by friday afternoon here and the columbia basin kind of gets blanked that's just per usual here with these west moving frontal systems now the wind conditions, let's check this out across the area. And you can see kind of this convergent zone activity going on through the afternoon today. You can see the winds converging down the strait and through the Chehalis Gap here. And here comes the frontal system though on Thursday morning. You can see it bringing some good southeast winds across uh, Whidbey Island up towards the San Juans, a little breezy through the Puget Sound. And these winds will be fairly strong through eastern washington at times too as we talked about up gusts up to 40 miles per hour are possible as the system moves through look at the oregon coast getting a pretty good shot of wind here too as we go through thursday morning in eastern oregon as well now here's the gust swath so this kind of highlights the peak winds and you can see and nothing too crazy but there's going to be some good winds on the oregon coast and maybe some gusty winds out towards spokane and southeast Washington. There's some of the higher terrain of the east slopes of the Cascades, if Washington and Oregon as well. And look at this, 45 miles per hour for the San Juans here and kind of clipping Whidbey Island with some 40 mile per hour gusts mm -hmm. as this frontal system moves through. So fairly robust frontal system coming through here Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. This is looking at North America here. You can see this is diurnal and nocturnal variation in the surface temperature. So you can see how we warm up during the day with afternoon heating across some of these portions, especially like the desert southwest, the valley there in California. And you can see how we don't really vary that much, especially through our upper terrain elevations here. You can see us warm up a little bit in the Puget Sound at times, but we're generally muted by this Pacific influence. That's why our temperatures don't vary near as much as some of the other areas around the country. You can see even some of the, east slow, uh, the eastern portions, the prairies of Canada out here, how they warm up during the day and cool off during the night, even here in May. 
So just wanted to show you guys that. Let's look at trough and mean ridge position here. You can see this next system really digging out another trough over the Pacific Northwest here. And the European has it kind of hanging out, tries to build a ridge briefly here during the day Saturday before some other systems are going to come through here. The tight gradient here between this deep Gulf of Alaska troughing and the Great Basin high here. So we're probably going to get clouds and precipitation with a setup like this. And then this kind of ejects inland across the British Columbia, this would bring kind of a windy scenario. It'd be a good gradient across Washington and Oregon, eastern portions as well with a system like this. But we're getting kind of far out there. We're getting towards 10 days out here. But it's showing troughing again for the next 10 days. So heads up for that. We're probably going to remain active here through on and through next week. As the GFS, of course, good agreement in the short term. And the trough kind of hanging out here. It shows that good gradient between the Gulf of Alaska low and the Great Basin high here. So probably going to get some moisture being pumped into the region here. Clouds and precipitation on in through next week and into next week. And kind of showing a similar thing where this low sets up over British Columbia, good gradient. So, man, we're going to continue this well below average temperature May, it looks like, into the extended. Let's check out the Canadian model as of last night. Or let's see if the morning one is run here. Let's check it out. Okay, it looks like it's in progress. And there goes the trough. Good agreement with the short term on Thursday system diving down. But that's as far as the Canadian goes there. Let's look at a little bit further as yesterday afternoon's run. And you can see the troughing generally hanging out. Great Basin high, Gulf of Alaska low. So good model agreement going through this weekend and on into next week with that active Gulf of Alaska trough going on here. Systems coming around the southern periphery of it and impacting our weather here. And look at this. This Canadian just really builds this trough over the west. Some ridging behind it, which could yield some nice weather well into the extended. But that is way too far out at this time to hang your hat on. And temperatures generally, of course, below average again on in through mid, on into late May almost now here on the GFS. It kind of starts to trend back towards normal here, but too far out in the extended to get excited about. Here's the European, this more, actually last night, 06Z run. You're well below average for SeaTac. Maybe a little bit of a warm up in the extended, but again, we don't have good agreement here between the ensemble mean and the control run here as it keeps us very cool all the way in through early next week. And yeah, general trough and mean pos ridge position. There comes the next trough with Thursday and Friday system. Then we build the heights back up a little bit. But we're probably going to be in a, a pattern where the Gulf of Alaska, the deep troughing is a little bit further away. But it's still going to bring systems and precipitation into the region here on in through next week. Now, here's a little weather 101. The troposphere is where we are. This is where almost all the weather occurs that we know about. The only exception is really maybe some overshooting tops, some supercell thunderstorms that punch up through the tropopause into the stratosphere briefly. But virtually all the weather that we know happens in the troposphere. And you can see how it starts to get warmer. Generally, our atmosphere cools off as you go aloft till you hit the tropopause. And then it, when you get into the stratosphere, it warms up a bit. So I'm showing you guys this. So I want to make this map coming up here make some sense. So look at this. This is the equator. You can see how the tropopause is much higher at the equatorial regions. There's just more heating, more warm air, higher tropopause. Polar area is the opposite, much lower tropopause. So when this cold air moves south, the tropopause is lower heights, and it brings this cold air down with it. And when we get troughs like over the Pacific Northwest, you'll see a low tropopause over the area. And you can see we reside here about 45, 47 north. We're always in this polar jet region. That's why we do get a lot of rainfall. We're in this general pattern of the planet where the polar jet hangs out near us for a good portion of the year. And you can see there is a subtropical jet that kind of hangs out a lot of times over Baja, Mexico. Um, it's a much weaker jet stream that's further south. Now, this is looking at that dynamic tropopause here. And you can see the trough that's dug out over us. You can see these low tropopause heights here. And as we put this into motion, here comes the next system rolling through here. You can see this cold air blast through the region here on Thursday. This kind of gives it a good idea where that warm air is moving northward. And, of course, the Earth's trying to balance this out by bringing cold air southward. And it's just a battle it can never win. That's why our weather just never stops. It's never ending. And you can see this carving out the Gulf of Alaska, troughing on in through early next week. Bringing some warm air ahead of it, but still, this is going to be a tight gradient. We're going to be developing mid-latitude cyclones, probably on the southern periphery of this low-pressure system across the Gulf of Alaska. But it's kind of an interesting thing watching this pol these polar lobes move around over the north 
pull here and as they kind of try to make some headway down into the lower latitudes here as you can see the equator the triple pause is much higher as we saw on that chart earlier so just a little 101 weather there and feel free to ask questions about this when we do the live streams we'll probably do one um probably wednesday on the drive on the chase it got so much time when we're setting up for a chase that i'll probably do some q a's about pacific northwest weather I'd like to chat with you guys see what you guys are thinking see if you want any improvements done to the channel or see different things so let me know what you're thinking there but if you're around the region today enjoy the sun breaks if you're getting them because these clouds are going to come blasting in tomorrow you can see this system out over the gulf of alaska here it's really going to bring that punch of a cold front into the region here on thursday morning so be prepared for that we're going to go right back into winter conditions here across the region it's going to seem like a, a february frontal system rolling through the area here so enjoy the sun breaks today and we'll continue to do this again through the week um we'll talk pr probably live and then uh, you know i'll do a briefing when i get back probably on friday as well and we'll continue to look at the next trough rolling down through the area and see how long our second winter is going to continue here for the pacific northwest so make sure to click like subscribe and leave any comments below and i'll talk to you guys later